Now, I'm not the only one who is catching our politicians and other political insiders breaking the law in our state. And there are others doing some good work out there. And I wanted to take a few minutes to point out some of their good work. I mean, I spent much of my time trying to teach and encourage others to become more active in the political process. And those willing to directly confront bad behavior are certainly worth calling out and recognizing for their good work. Now, but before I do that, I just want to remind everybody watching this video to subscribe, share, and like this video. And feel free to share these videos with others who also might appreciate the content. This is all free to you, and it only costs a few seconds of your time. But it certainly does have an impact on our channel, and it tends to help more people see the content that our political leaders absolutely don't want you to know. So if you're a huge fan and you want to support my efforts on this channel and uh, the other work that I do, you can go to my website at We The Govern, link down below, and financially support us that way as well. Everything's greatly appreciated and truly anything helps. Now let's get back to it. And listen, I know that this seems impossible, but it is not. It isn't always easy or always simple, but right now, being involved and in holding these guys accountable, this is what's happening in our state. And nothing and nobody actually sees anything. Our media is unwilling to expose the truth. Our enforcement agencies are usually captured entirely by those who they purport to investigate. And nobody else will do this for you. And it might start small, but it does start somewhere, and it might as well be you and I who actually get it started. So let's talk about some of the other activists out there who are willing to confront and expose bad behavior. And I'm going to start with some interesting Public Disclosure Commission complaints that have been filed recently. As a regular viewers of this channel, they know I've filed many of these. And uh, when combined with ethics complaints, I'd say that I filed about 680 or so over the last few years, with about 20 of them or more still active investigations. And you can see the link below where I provide source documents and case files for the 210 or so formal fines and sanctions, which were imposed on the judges, the politicians, PACs, labor groups, and others who I've basically caught over the past few years. However, as I said, and I'm very happy to report, I may be prolific, but I'm certainly not alone. So here are some of my favorite cases from the last year or so, which I believe highlight some of the good work that activists can do if they start to dig and they pay attention. Uh, the first one here is actually a local Thurston County activist, Rebecca Joy Faust, who has filed what appears to be a very solid complaint against the Public Defenders Association, which until recently was actually called Civil Survival. And her complaint, which has initiated a formal PDC investigation, involved the fact that this organization openly brags about having many lobbyists on staff and constantly lobbying the legislature, and yet they've never filed any of their lobbying paperwork. It's known as an L3. And this is actually a pretty serious violation, if this turns out to be true. Now, this organization mostly consists of formerly incarcerated felons and public defenders who want to early release violent criminals back into our communities. One of their principals is state legislator Tara Simmons, who herself is a former incarcerated felon who was able to kind of reform her efforts and get the Supreme Court even to allow her to get a bar license and practice law. Now, this is actually a fairly difficult type of complaint to file because it requires you to find some evidence that the organization actually has active lobbying efforts in Olympia or with other government officials. And you have to be able to navigate the PDC website to verify if they filed any paperwork on their lobbying activities in the past. It helps the investigation process if they haven't done so. So I've admired Rebecca's work as an activist studying the Washington State Legislative Ethics Laws in the past, and I'm happy to see her branching out into campaign finance PDC world as well. So keep them coming, Rebecca. I do like this one. Uh, the second complaint that I found insightful was a complaint filed by longtime public records litigator and Pierce County activist Arthur West. And this was against SEIU lobbyist Lindsey Grad for concealing their lobbying efforts on the redistricting commission. Now, Mr. West did a great job documenting this violation through the use of public records, including text messages that provide evidence to support his claims. And by documenting this information uh, and making sure that it had been filed with the PDC as well, I, I found this to be a very effective uh, complaint. This case is advancing into the final stage of the PDC investigation process right now, and it appears almost certain that Mr. West's complaint is solid and that it has clear merit. Now, Arthur West is a longtime activist and is very familiar with Public Records Act and the Open Public Means Act litigation. He has probably won more cases in court requiring government agencies to pay fines and damages than anyone else in this area in the state of Washington. 
and he has filed several successful PDC complaints in the past that have resulted in sanctions and even AG lawsuits and even a citizen action notice case back before the law was changed in 2018. So it's, it's really no surprise that he's found another violation here. But interested activists could learn from Mr. West's submission of evidence based on what he found from his public records requests. This is actually a classic and very well substantiated complaint that effectively helps expose the truth. Now, finally, just another set of complaints that I really liked from late last year was filed by William Banks against four different ranked choice voting packs that included Fair Vote and some subsidiary packs in San Juan County and Seattle and other places in our state. This was last year. Now, I don't believe that I know Mr. Bangs. I don't think I do, but I really appreciate the series of complaints which required some assembling of information that included screen captures of websites and scans of mailers. I mean, this appears to be his first complaint series that he's ever filed, which already resulted in a $150 fine, one sanction letter, and a few formal reminder notices to the various violators. Um, this was also not a super easy complaint for him to find and a document and to file. And having some success in this effort, especially first time out of the gate, that's certainly worth pointing out. Now, obviously, there's more than just these three activists out there. There's quite a few more. But I just wanted to point out these cases, uh, mainly because I believe others who want to engage in holding our political class accountable, they can use these complaints and the process they went through. That can actually serve as a decent template for investigations or for research that uh, perhaps you might be doing right now. I believe it's way easier to learn from others' mistakes and successes, and these recent examples are good ones for you to reference, and I've linked to them all below. Now, I've also filed a dozen or so complaints recently, just in the last couple of weeks. You're welcome to use those templates or any of the ones I've done in the last few years. I mean, listen, I'm, I'm sure that a lot of people watching this video, they're thinking, hey, what's the point? I mean, nothing really happens to these guys, right? Well, sometimes that's true. But the challenge that we currently face is that nobody's really looking into anything that's happening in local government. And I believe there's a lot of bad behavior that pretty much never gets exposed because nobody's even bothering to look. Campaign finance and ethics complaints, particularly when combined with records requests and whistleblower recruitment, can actually be some of the most effective ways, particularly in the beginning, to make an impact in our state. And it's just a simple, relatively easy, and low-cost way to start down your own road uh, to become more engaged in your own type of activism. So with that, I'll just leave you with just a few thoughts on this subject. Uh, you can do this yourself. You don't have to wait for others. Start looking at what your local politicians and bureaucrats are doing. Dig deep. You never know what you can find. Number two, definitely use the public records. Our state's Public Records Act is one of the most robust of the nation. Sure, the bureaucrats are always trying to water it down, but until then, we can use this very well. And finally, you need to start somewhere. The future belongs to those who show up, and why not start showing up just like these people?